Are you wondering why toms and hens never share the same barn? Due to increasing breast muscle size, turkeys can no longer effectively mate naturally. Therefore, semen must be collected and the hens must be artificially inseminated to obtain fertile eggs. Artificial insemination has the added benefit of disease control because semen can be transferred between barns instead of birds. Only the best tom should be used for breeding, including those with good, strong legs and feet, and quality semen production. A qualified artificial insemination technician has the job of collecting semen into a syringe by aspiration. Collection is generally done early in the morning to prevent fecal contamination since the lights are turned off at night and the toms have not eaten anything. Usually, semen is collected from each male once or twice per week. This process is typically done with two people. One holds the tom and the aspirator, the other stimulates the tom. The back, cloaca, and tail head are manipulated by a series of movements to stimulate ejaculation. After stimulating the male, the bird's phallus will protrude from the vent area. The technician gently squeezes the phallus and semen then pools on the phallic region which is then aspirated into the syringe. Extender, which is rich in nutrients, is added to the semen to ensure that sperm remain viable for a longer period of time. Extender also dilutes the sperm allowing the insemination of more hens. Only high quality semen that is thick and white is used to inseminate. Semen that is watery or off color should not be used. Turkey semen is highly concentrated, with approximately 8 billion sperm cells per milliliter. Semen is placed in straws, which hold one dose of semen for artificial insemination. A tom will typically produce approximately one half a milliliter of semen per collection, which is enough to inseminate 10 hens. To get the semen inside the hen, one person averts the hen's oviduct outside of her body. A person applies slight pressure to the hen's abdomen and gently pushes on the vent area which presents the oviduct. Hens will perform a post-coital fluff following the insemination procedure. It is thought that this behavior helps the semen move toward the ovary within the female's reproductive tract. Hens are initially inseminated approximately two weeks after photostimulation and each week thereafter because sperm can be stored in an oviduct between inseminations. Hens lay eggs for 26 weeks with peak production at around 37 to 40 weeks of age. Turkeys lay from 90 to 110 eggs per year, while broiler breeders lay 150 to 170. The turkey egg is quite similar to a chicken egg, only larger. The optimal size of a turkey hatching egg is between 80 and 100 grams. A frequent problem in turkey breeding is that hens become broody. Broodiness is a natural instinct in birds where they want to sit on their eggs and incubate the growing embryo. Broody hens will aggressively defend their nests, stop laying eggs, eat less, and move stiffly. Hens develop a brood patch, which is an area of the hen's chest that loses its feathers. It is thought to better transmit the hen's body heat to the egg for proper incubation. Broodiness is associated with elevated levels of hormone called prolactin. In a barn with many broody hens, there is competition for nests since most hens want to sit on eggs. The incidence of broodiness can be worsened by hot weather, poor lighting, infrequent egg gathering, and floor layers. The competition for nests can also lead to an increase in the number of eggs that are laid on the floor. Floor eggs are undesirable because they are dirty and can lead to problems associated with contamination during incubation. Not to mention, they are much harder to collect. Once hens begin to lay eggs on the floor, it is very difficult to change this habit. Management and prevention of broody behavior is essential because broody hens have dramatically decreased egg production and can trigger this behavior in other hens. Broody hens are identified and moved to different pens because the change in environment can decrease broody tendencies. Carefully controlled photo periods, including increasing days to 17 hours of light, can reduce the occurrence of broodiness in hens. Eggs are collected by hand and the hen is encouraged to leave the nest at this time. In the egg collection room, eggs are placed into flats with the large end up so that the egg will store the best and the embryo can develop properly. 
Eggs are stored in coolers between 16 and 18 degrees Celsius on a farm until they are shipped to the hatchery. Cooling halts embryonic development within the egg. Eggs can be stored for a week with no adverse effect on hatchability. Poults that hatch out of these eggs will become commercial turkeys that will be raised for the meat market and end up on the table in your turkey sandwich or your next special occasion. Commercial turkey producers practice the same biosecurity procedures as turkey breeder producers. These measures include proper sanitation of the barn, accurate record keeping, and appropriate signage to discourage outside visitors. This commitment to flock health is important in ensuring that only meat of the highest quality is consistently produced. Poults are transported from the hatchery in environmentally controlled trucks and arrive at the farm within 24 hours of when they were hatched. The barn is warmed well ahead of when the poults arrive so the bedding is warm. Turkey poults are vulnerable and require extra attention to prevent stress which can hinder their growth. Poults are kept close to feed, water, and brooder stoves which provide supplemental heat. Heat and ventilation are constantly monitored by high-tech computer systems to ensure the turkeys are comfortable. Air is circulated so that birds have a clean air supply. In the winter, air must be heated before it enters the barn. The barn is kept very warm until their down is replaced by feathers. Producers will have alarms set up for instances when conditions change. Water is usually delivered through bell-type water fonts. Adequate nutrition is essential to commercial turkey production. Throughout their life, turkeys are given various types of feed, called rations, to make sure they are getting the nutrients they need for different stages of growth. Feed is provided by automatic feeders, which are refilled when feed levels become low. The birds are encouraged to eat as much as they want to promote rapid growth. Feed is high in protein to accommodate high rates of breast muscle growth. Turkeys are not fed hormones, they rely on their own. Their rapid growth is due to proper nutrition, genetic selection, and management. Like all other birds, turkeys are sensitive to the changes in day length. As commercial turkeys grow, day length is reduced. For the first few days, post-hatch poults are supplied with 24 hours of light, which allows the birds to find food and water. At three days old, they are given approximately 20 hours of light, whereas at 15 weeks of age, they have 16 hours of light. Light intensity is also reduced as the birds grow to minimize their energy expenditure on activity. There are different sizes of turkeys available in the grocery stores, depending on what age they are sent to the market. For example, broiler turkeys weigh about 6 kilograms when sent to market. Hens, which are typically smaller birds, weigh 8 kilograms, and toms, which are larger, weigh 13 kilograms when sent to market. Turkeys, like broilers, are taken to market in specially equipped trucks to maintain the comfort of the birds. Good management practices at the farm level ensure that only the highest quality turkey meat is supplied to grocery stores.